What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing? Welcome to Jake Richardson's Coaching Corner, Season 2, Episode 12. The topic of the day is pushing through the life wall. If you listen to Episode 11, it was pushing through the fitness wall. Now we're going to dig a little deeper and we're going into the life wall. What is a life wall? A life wall, to me, is something holding you back slash limiting you from reaching your full potential. Everybody runs into this. We are not robots. We are human beings. We have expectations. We have dreams. We have goals in life that we want to reach and obtain. If it was that easy to do so, everybody would be doing it and everybody would be happy and successful. But you learn really fast that to obtain your dreams and your goals, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. And you run into a lot of problems along the way that thin you out to where either you make it or you don't make it. And those are life walls. What kind of walls do people hit in life? The first one are emotional. Emotion is huge. If you can control it, it's a great thing. If you can't control it, it's horrible. And this is a big part of either making it through that wall or getting stuck and left behind that wall. You see it all the time. Homeless people, people that still live at their parents' house past the age of 30, uh, the list goes on and on. They have these huge emotional problems, these traumas that have happened in their life that affect their emotion. And it limits them. It holds them all the way back. They don't know how to break through it. And they're very much so stuck within it. Emotion can help you in the sense of you can harness it. So if you can control your emotions, if you could use them when need be, pull them back when need be, it will help you in particular situations. If I'm blurting and babbling and going crazy when the time does not need it to be that way, then people are gonna look at you funny, you're not gonna have the opportunity to succeed, so forth and so forth. So emotion to me is first and foremost. You have to corral and get your emotion locked in to push through that wall, and to become more and more successful. Finances. Besides emotion, finances are huge when it comes to a life wall. Money makes the fucking world around because we created money in a sense to help people flourish and also limit people at the same time. If you have a shitload of money, you have more and more opportunities to flourish and get shit done. If you don't have a lot of money, you're stressing out more often than not. And your day is wrapped around how you can get more money. Because the world is based on dough. When you have it, the walls get shorter and shorter and shorter. And they're easier to leap over. You see it all the time. with These extremely rich people, they get away with the craziest shit. Because people love money. And when you have money, you can hire lawyers, you can have security, you can grow and grow and grow and grow to the point where the walls around you get so high that people can't climb over and touch you. So money actually helps you create walls if you're trying to block people out. But if you don't have any money, you're very much so vulnerable. People are easily stepping over your walls and getting into where you are. Money's a hard one. I think there's a fine line between having too little and having too much where they can collide into the same problems. If you could use your money as fuel to help when it comes to finding financial freedom, then it's easier to hop over those walls. I think that is the main focus that I always try to push when it comes to money. Don't necessarily work on how could I get a hundred million dollars or how could I screw somebody over and get more money? Work on financial freedom. What do you need to do to limit bills and liabilities and increase assets and time? If you could figure it out, everybody has different answers. There's not a set number of money that's going to make you feel great. 
and there's not a set number of hours that you'll get back that'll make you feel great. You have to find that sweet spot. And if you could do that, you will plow through any wall in life that money is holding you back from. Try to focus on that. Try to find financial freedom and the right number for you. And if you could do that, time will be great. Your family will be great. And you'll be very happy. If you could focus on those three, money should be based on that. Getting your time back, making sure that you can take care of your family, and then making sure that you're happy. Because I've met people that have millions upon millions of dollars that fuck up in all three of those categories and they're stressed and miserable. I know people that are broke as fuck that fuck up on all three and they're stressed as shit. I also know people that are very rich and I know people that are very poor that can take care of those three things and also be very happy at the same time. So there's not a set thing. It's just whatever feels right to you. But make sure you're taking care of your finances, making sure your money is working for you. Physical, what kind of walls do people hit all the time? Physical is a huge one. I feel I feel like physical is quietly the biggest one. If you're not taking care of yourself and you're fat or you're unhealthy or you're lazy or you're low energy, all the other shit kind of comes into play. More often than not, that dictates how your emotions are, if they're sporadic. More often than not, that dictates what you're putting your money into. Because more often than not, if you're unhappy with yourself, what we tend to do is buy all this shit and put it on top of us to hide what we hate the most about us. If you're a big body, if you're not happy with how you look, or you just really don't like yourself and how you're looking head to toe... We put all this gaudy clothes on, we buy these cars, we buy these big houses, and we kind of become a recluse. We hide behind all these things that we're buying. And then we're just pushing and shitting all the money out, and then we end up going bankrupt or losing our dough and being sad as fuck already. So if you can really take care of yourself physically, a lot of the other stuff really, A, doesn't matter, or B, kind of falls into play. Make sure you're going to the gym Make sure that you're doing the fitness that makes you happy. If you like to run, fucking go run. Go run, but make sure you take care of your body. If you like to swim, go swim, go bike, go do all these things and do them as much as your body can handle. Your body will tell you when it needs a little bit of a break. You'll sleep a little bit longer. You'll feel a little bit more sore. But always as you're doing these things, make sure you're doing the full step. Some people just like to work out. And don't like to take care of themselves. When you don't take care of yourself, icing, stretching, eating the right things, sleeping, your body will pay. You'll get hurt and then you'll be depressed. Then you'll be hurt and you can't make money. So they're all very much so connected. Work out. Stretch. Hydrate. Sleep. Meditate. Connect all these things together and you'll be extremely happy. Because this wall will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. As you grow bigger and bigger and bigger. I've had so many clients in the history of me doing fitness that are super dedicated. They're losing the weight. They're feeling good. They don't hear from them for a couple months. Then when they do come back, they gain 20, 30, 40 pounds back. And then we got to start all over again. When they come back, everything that we worked on physically, emotionally, spiritually is all out the window. And they got to do it all over again. So why do that to yourself? Work on a pattern of consistency. Work on something that you know that you could do. Don't go zero to a million. Try to stay at 60 fucking miles an hour the whole time. Your body will thank you for it. Your gas tank will thank you for it. Do those things in that category and find a rhythm of consistency. If you notice throughout this whole episode, that's going to be the underlying thing. With your emotions, with your money, with your physical, with your spiritual, if you can find a consistent rhythm of just an even pace, life will gradually get better and better and better. But if you go a million miles, you always end up crashing. If you go too slow, you always end up fucking missing the opportunities. So work on even and work on something that you could do for a very long time. You don't need to work out four hours if you haven't fucking worked out in two months. How about you work out for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you build from there? But we want the fast return. We want to look amazing 
in two weeks. We want to be rich as fuck in two days. It doesn't work that way. You got to slow it down. You have to really build a foundation and then you'll reap all the rewards that come with that. And physical is huge. If you are physically happy with yourself, then everything else will fall into place. So please, if you are paying close attention and you are in a position where your emotions are all fucked up and you're sad and your money's not right, my best advice right now is get the fuck up and get in the gym Go run, do something active, and every day after that, stay with it. Little things. The little things turn into the big things. So if you could work on your health, you'll be a lot help happier, and your brain will work better to help you find avenues to make dough. Physical, huge. Spiritual. People always get so tense and so uh, awkward when you say spiritual. Whatever you believe in is up to you. There's no right or wrong path. As long as you have some type of faith. And your faith could be even within yourself. More often than not, people that are religious or people that have a spiritual connection tend to believe in themselves a little bit more and tend to have something that they can hold on to that will guide them to success. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It all stems into believing in yourself. If you have spiritual faith and it is just you and you know that you're on the right path and you're doing the right thing because it comes from a good place, then you'll be just fine. Those walls will be easy as fuck. But if you are spiritually knocked down where you believe in nothing, you believe in nobody, you don't give a fuck about yourself. I've never met somebody, I was about to say 99, but I'm probably going to say 100% of the time, you will not be successful because I've never met somebody in my life that has been successful, that doesn't believe in something, doesn't believe in the people around them, and doesn't believe in themselves, is a equation that equals into disaster if that's really how you feel. And you need to get out of that. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a million miles an hour jumping into church and saying all your Hail Marys and donating half your fucking paycheck to St. Vincent of Paul. I don't know. This, this has nothing to do with that. It has to do with you believing that the path that you're on is the right path and it comes from a good place. If you feel that way, you'll be very successful. If you don't feel that way, then you're going to be very unsuccessful and don't feel like you have to rush it. It could be a slow build. You could... Get in the gym, start working out, start liking what you see. Then when you start liking what you see, you have more self-worth. Then you can branch out. You can either meet somebody because then with self-worth, now you think that there's value in yourself. You will find people that will be attracted to you that find value within you. Maybe they have a spiritual connection. Maybe they have strong faith in anything. You guys get together your faith becomes strong within each other and it just branches out that way because in a bigger frame, when you do meet somebody and you branch out and spiritual and you feel good, more often than not you have kids. Then you're teaching these kids things. You want to make sure you're teaching your kids a position of positivity where they can believe in something, they can believe in themselves, and they can believe in the people around them and they can grow from there. So like I said, don't get too caught up in that one thinking that has to be religious or has to be this or that. It has to do with, at the end of the day, finding a way to believe in yourself. So spiritually is a huge wall that people run into that really holds them back. Those four as a whole, emotions, finances, physical, spiritual, they're all very much so intertwined and connected. And you'll notice when you tackle one strongly and you find that consistent rhythm to build, the other ones slowly build with them even if you like it or you don't like it, all four of those are very much so connected and you need to tackle all four and slowly work to become a better person. Because when you are a better person and you really find value in yourself and you really give a fuck about yourself, you will run through any wall that stands in your way. Me personally, if I had to bet on myself 10 out of 10, I'd do it every time. There's never something I'd hesitate on when it's just me. But I have a lot of faith in myself. I very much so control all the money I make. I work out and believe in my body because I built it the way it is. And my emotions are very much so locked in. 
see how they're all connected, see what they end up doing for you. So take those and run with them. What can you do to push through this wall? The first one and the most important one is get some help. You cannot make it through life by yourself. It doesn't work. They have shows where it's like lost in the woods and the people have to do 30 days by themselves. Nobody fucking makes it. They make it 10 days and are crying like a soft ass bitch and looking for mommy and daddy or their wife or their husband because when you are by yourself, Shit does not work the way you want it to work. We need to be around people. We need to unload our emotions. We need to absorb what somebody else is going through to understand through their experience how to migrate through it once it's your turn and you're experiencing the same shit. We need people around us. And getting help when you are in a shitty position and you cannot get past a certain wall is extremely important. Who should you be getting help from? First off, especially if it's a life wall or an emotional wall, you should be talking to a psychiatrist or a therapist. Nowadays, talking to a psychiatrist or therapist isn't as much of a faux pas as it used to be. A lot more people are very much so expressive about how they're seeing therapists and psychiatrists, athletes, actors, the regular person, CEOs, CFOs, they all talk to somebody. Me personally, I am a personal trainer. I've been doing it for 11 years. My job has transitioned from personal training to psychiatry and therapy where people will come to me and just tell me about their whole life. They'll tell me about divorces. They'll tell me about abuse. They'll tell me about them cheating, somebody cheating on them. They'll tell you all the craziest stories on the planet and you have to help them through it and give the best advice that you possibly can to help somebody's life because you do realize that there is somebody that's going to absorb that advice and use it. So make sure you're giving them the best advice. So a psychiatrist, a therapist, very good. Who else should you be talking to? When it comes to money, you should be talking to people that are more successful than you. Don't talk about progression with somebody that is either exactly where you're at or regressing. You need to get a hold of people that are a higher level than you. If you can be around in a room with a lot of high-level people that know how to make money, that know how to be successful, then you will know how to make money and you'll be very successful because your juices are flowing and going. When it comes to physical, who you, who should you be getting a hold of? Who should be you should be asking for help? Trainers, people that are in shape, social media, YouTube, all the information is out there. There is no excuse for you not knowing how to do something. There's no excuse for you not being in shape because there's so much information and you should get a hold of a trainer. Fuck, if you need a trainer, get a hold of me and I'll give you the right guidance and the right steps to be in better shape. It is not hard. You just need the right people around you. So that's the first one. Getting through that wall, you need to be ready for help and you need to be very willing for help. If you're somebody that is not ready for help or not willing to receive help because you have too much of an ego, then it's either going to be a really long road to, for you to get to success or you'll never get to the end of the road because your ego is so big, it will slow you down, it will stop you, and you won't get to where you need to go. People that get to the finish line, people that are very successful, are constantly asking for help, are constantly asking questions. Don't ever stop doing that. Be real with yourself. That is another way you get through the wall. Asking for help. Diving into your own issues, your own problems, tackling them, and becoming a better person. You have to be very open. You have to be very honest. And you have to really dive in. If you could do that and you could be real with yourself and point out your flaws, point out what you're good at, and then apply it to your life. Try to get rid of the flaws. Try to increase the positives. Then you'll get... To where you need to be. You'll knock through those walls. But if you don't do that. And you observe your flaws. And you don't change them. Then you ain't gonna be shit. Because you ain't shit right now. If you have a gang of flaws. And you want to get here. And you know those flaws are holding you back. And you still insist on not getting through. Then you ain't shit. I have a fucking best friend of mine. Love this guy to death. Would do anything for him. But he cannot get out of his own way. This guy hurts himself every move. He 
has all these opportunities, he has all this talent, and he would fuck it off every time. And there's nobody to blame but himself. The day that he realizes and tackles these demons and knows how to knock them all out, he'll be extremely successful because he is cut from the same cloth that I'm cut from. The difference is I never went down the rabbit hole that he went down when it comes to emotional problems, all these things that he can insist on kind of pushing down the hole and never allowing to be on the surface, the surface and tackling me more often than not with my problems. I'm very transparent with myself. I will tell myself what I'm good at. I'll tell myself what I'm not good at. I pay attention when I'm doing the not good things to stop that and correct them. If you could do this, you'll be just fine. If you can't do this, then you'll be like how my friend is. And it's sad when you see it because they're constantly holding themselves back. And all you want them to do is do better and be better. At the end of the day, you being around them and you trying to help them out when they don't want help does the complete opposite. They'll rebel against you. They won't listen. You need them to fuck up. You need them to find themselves. And hopefully if they do find themselves, they come back to you realize that you are on the right tip. How could I link up with you and then keep going forward? Don't feel like giving up on this person is based on not being there for them. You only give up on the person when you don't allow them to come back, when you don't allow them after they get done all the good things to get back into your good graces. Push them away and hopefully they make the right decision. And then when they do make the right decision, embrace them back in and then grow together. Number three, focus on your health. I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again. The healthier, fitter people that are doing the right things and not just looking good, taking care of yourself, taking the right vitamins, eating the right things. Health from inside outward because there's a lot of in-shape people that eat shit, that take bullshit and are very unhealthy and have, because of the steroids, ingrown organs or grow like massive organs that end up killing them you need to take care of yourself health wise inside now inside first take the right vitamins eat the right things and then build from there but health is big fitness diet can't press that more and more but i'm going to press it more and more get the fuck in the gym take care of your health and that will help you when it comes to breaking through the wall keep good people around you that's the biggest one too like i was saying earlier with my friend on a different tip than me, on a different path than me, I got to push you away a little bit. If you want to get on the right tip, on the right path, then I'll bring you back in. But for me, I take a lot of pride in keeping only really good, high-level people around me because that will make me really good and high-level at the same time. If you're slowing me down, if you're not speaking the same language as me when it comes to success and when it comes to fitness and when it comes to emotion and spirituality then get the fuck away from me. People think that's harsh, but that's life. I cannot sit around. You do not have enough energy to allow a lot of people that aren't seeing eye to eye to be around you because they'll slow you down. You'll get emotional. You'll blurt out. You'll, you'll start acting like them. You're going to waste your money trying to help them out. You're going to get sporadically, erratically emotional because they're pissing you off because you want them to do the right thing. Your spirituality is going to get tested because they're doing the wrong things that you know aren't right and you're still kind of going down that path with them trying to nicely pull them out. And then your health gets messed up because they're emotionally messing you up. Time that you're wasting with them, you should be in the gym. So get the fuck away from these people. Break them off. Be around people on the same thought process as long as it's a positive thought process. As long as the thought process is going forward, and then be around people that are on higher levels than you that see your potential and want you to come with them. That's the whole thing. You don't need to all be here. I can see a young man making positive, good moves that isn't where I'm at, but could easily be there. And all they need is a little bit of advice and then they'll start moving forward. If you can get a hold of guys like that, while somebody else is doing that for you, then it's like a sled full of dogs. Everybody's just going forward. They have that alpha at the front because he's leading the pack, but 
his role and the dog at the very back are just as important. They're all going forward. They're all going to a positive place. So keeping the good people around you, keeping the positive people around you is super important. And get rid of all the weak ass motherfuckers that are holding you back. Like I said, they don't got to be weak motherfuckers forever. Shit changes. Really positive people become negative and get the fuck rid of them. Really negative people become positive. Bring them back into your life. It's interchanging. You don't have to always just be one. You can always change it up whenever you feel like it for the negative or the positive. So figure that shit the fuck out and get these weak motherfuckers away from you. What kind of people push through the life wall? People that want to win. Winners push the, the, the life wall because they don't want to lose and they'll do whatever it takes not to lose. So winners push through that wall. Number two, people that don't make excuses. Excuses will slow you down. Excuses will allow you to be less than what you should be. I fucking hate excuses. Explaining yourself is one thing because when you explain yourself, you have an opportunity to make the situation better. That's okay. Explaining is fine. Excuses are when you tell me why you can't and then you don't do anything to fix it. I fucking hate people that got excuses. I hate people that try to, yeah, but excuses and the fucking phrase, yeah, but are always connected because nobody wants to make a change and they think they're on the right tip because they're lazy as fuck. So people that make excuses or don't make, people that make excuses, get the fuck out of there. People that don't make excuses, push through the wall. People with resilience. Resilience is big. You don't have to always be successful. I love people that are successful and crash and then build back up and then keep going up. Every story, every very highly, every highly successful person has had a moment in life where they were here and then got here. Weak motherfuckers stay here and keep going down. Successful, real motherfuckers are here and then go forward. And then they have that story to help people that are in that situation. Because if you're kid, if you're always successful. You don't know how to help people that are in the mud because you've never been in the mud. But if you've been successful, dropped into the mud and then come out, your story is so much more powerful and the masses will listen to you because you know exactly what it feels like. So resilience is key. And that is the biggest shit. Those three right there, wanting to win, never having excuses and having resilience will always get you through the wall. Just those three things will push you through that wall. And with that being said, we're towards the end of this podcast. We're towards the end of this episode. My best advice to give to you, if you're at a place where you're hitting a wall or if you're at a place where you've gotten over a wall, and we're always kind of in that situation in life. We're always either approaching and being stuck at a wall or we're just getting over one and seeing the grass and going and trying to get better and better and better. Don't shy away from hitting that wall and be very proud and embrace the moment when you get through the wall. Those two are very important. You have to be ready for it. And then when you get through it, you have to acknowledge it, absorb it, pass it on to somebody else, the story, and then keep going. It's always happening. It never stops. As a human being, you should always be striving for more. You should always be trying to help the people around you. If you're fine, perfect. But that doesn't mean everybody around you is fine. So now your next goal is to help them out and get them to a state of being very happy and very strong. Because this is a tribe. You got to where you are now because a list of people put a lot of time and energy into helping you out. So now it's your turn once you are in a position where you're very comfortable to help them back out because a circle is going to always help each other and you guys will always grow. That is the best advice I can possibly give is make yourself better, make the people around you better. With that being said, episode's over. Listen to everything I said and go do that shit. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. Get them better so then they branch out and they get other motherfuckers better. That is the key to the game. I'm out. Peace.